Welcome to the Under Center Podcast presented by St. Xavier University. And I'm fortunate enough to have returning, or we are fortunate enough, I should say, to have returning, all right, one of the hosts that was on this show, and of course, sports anchor, but now he's the news anchor weekly in CBS <laughs> Philly. The news, he's not in the toy box any longer, everybody. He's out there making official moves, and we always appreciate this, brother. Shout out to Siafa Lewis. Follow him at Siafa underscore Lewis. Siafa, how are you doing today? Oh my God! It, it is it is so great to be back with you guys, to see you guys, to see your faces, and uh, to to talk about some Chicago sports. You're making my day here, making my month. Well, we're definitely going to talk about some Chicago sports, but since you're back home in Philadelphia, uh, we got to talk about something nice on that side. And of course, with the Bears facing the Eagles this Sunday at noon at Soldier Field, uh, let's start with Jalen Hurts. Um, I just remember some of the conversations we used to have talking about Justin and Jalen. And where were you at initially when it came to Jalen Hurts? And where are you at with how he came back this season, proving a lot of people wrong? Man, I've I've got a couple text threads, and uh, my one of my one of my re- one of my greatest friends on the planet, Trent, was all about Jalen Hurts last year. I was not, and then I have another friend, Chris. We go way back. He was all about Jalen Hurts, as I just said. I was not, and every Sunday they do not miss the opportunity to text me every single Sunday. Um, I like Jalen Hurts, the human being. I like his character. I like all the intangibles. I didn't think he had the arm strength. I didn't think he had the accuracy. Um, I didn't think he had the pedigree. And I wasn't sure. And I had not, I, I, I racked my brain. I mean, I have so many conversations about this. I was not sure that I could think of a quarterback who went from being overdrafted in the second round, arguably, to a star. And my, my position was this. As somebody who believed that Carson Wentz was the guy and who was I mean, beyond disappointed that he was not the guy. I wanted a guy who could be a top five quarterback in the league. So when you talk about uh, Josh Allen or Patrick, I should start with Patrick Mahomes. So Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen and Aaron Rodgers. When you talk about those dudes who have the total package, I wanted a quarterback who could also be in that conversation. And based on what I saw last year, and it ended as as, as poorly as it possibly could not in the playoff loss in January of this year, mind you, I did not think Jalen could go from being where he was to being one of those guys. And obviously, I, at this point, am incorrect. All right, so you just mentioned all those shortcomings that you, you thought you saw last season. In, in your opinion, what do you think he's improved upon the most? What's been his biggest area of growth this year that now he is the guy? The thing I like the most about Jalen Hurts, and it's not, it's not talked about enough, I think the dude has a brilliant mind. Now, he is – he did grow up with a with a, a football coach in his household. His father is a football coach. Um, he played for Nick Saban, so I think he he really really has has through osmosis. I don't know, but it's like you talk to Jalen Hurts throughout the course of the week or even after the game. It's like Nick Saban. That dude does not smile. He doesn't crack. He's all about business. Game one, this game is over. He's on to the next one. I mean, he is Nick Saban as a quarterback. Um, Jalen Hurts is mind. Uh, I actually filled in for our sports anchors last week, and we played a bite from uh, offensive coordinator Shane Steichen, who says that Jalen is literally, this is not just coach speak, he's literally the first guy in the building, last guy out of the building, and he sits in on the coaches' meetings on Tuesdays. He sits in with the coaches' meetings. Mm. Like, he is a student of the game. Um, His decision-making, there are very few quarterbacks, and listen, it is a small sample size, but based on what we have seen up to this point through 13 weeks, there are very few quarterbacks whose decision making I would trust over Jalen Hurts at this point. And when you, if we get to the point where we talk about the MVP candidacy, the biggest thing for me is the guy doesn't turn the ball over, be right. it fumbling or intercept or interceptions. He does not turn the ball over. Everybody else who's in that NBC com- MVP conversation has at least double the turnovers that Jalen Hurts does. His decision making, um, and how did he get better? I think um, I believe he went to Tom House, who's a noted quarterback guru. Um, he's worked with Tom Brady, Peyton, uh, not Peyton Manning, uh, Drew Brees. He's worked with tons of of, of guys that you know. Um, but I think it was something in, in Jalen's mechanics, his throwing. I don't know radius or whatever, but there's something that was off when he his delivery. There was something that was off. He worked mm-hmm. on his mechanics. He has become insanely accurate beat in immediate throws, especially deep throws. I mean, I was at the game on Sunday in, in North Jersey against the Giants, and some of those, I, two of the passes weren't even passes because receivers couldn't get their foot in bounds, but 
to pinpoint accuracy on the deep throws in the rain, in inclement weather, it's it's something I haven't seen before. I don't understand how you go, again, from the guy we saw in January who completed, I think it was, he had a 36 quarterback rating in that playoff loss against Tampa Bay in January to a guy who now leads the league in quarterback rating, whether you like it or not, um, with 100.8. It's remarkable. Siafa, when did you go, particularly what game, did you go from being a skeptic to a fan of Jalen Hurts and what took place to make you put aside any worries you had about him being the guy under center for the Eagles? Um, what game was it? The Indianapolis game. So I, th- I think I-, I watch a lot of national shows and they-, they kind of gloss over very important facts and context. The Eagles played two games in like a 30 day span. They had a bye week and then they had a Thursday game and a Sunday game. So anyway, um, they beat up on Pittsburgh. I think, believe they had their bye week. They came back. I forget who they came back against. Anyway, they lost the game to Washington. Uh, three horrible turnovers. Wasn't Jalen's fault. They lost their tight end, who was instrumental to their offense. And then they went into Indianapolis. Uh, I think it was Indianapolis' second game with Jeff Saturday as a head coach. Um, physical, tough, gritty team. Talent, eh. But they were handling it to the Eagles, and they couldn't do anything. And something just snapped in Jalen, I believe, in the fourth quarter. And he just said, whatever it takes, I'm going to win this game be it whether I throw the ball or whether I have to make the decision and run the ball. And one of the best things I like about Jalen Hurts when he runs, and we've talked about this a little bit last year when it comes to quarterbacks who tend to run a lot, I don't like the the um, punishment that they subject themselves to just as far as them the longevity of their careers. I mean, you see most guys, uh, Cam Newton, who is as big as a, as a house. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's hurt. He's not playing anymore. It was, it was injuries that really did him in. We could talk about some other things there anywhere. Um Jalen's comeback in the fourth quarter against Indianapolis was the first time where I was like, wow, like this dude, there's, there's, there's something here. There's something legit here because a lot, a lot of the other games, the Eagles were front runners and they did that without their starting tight end, who I believe is, is pro bowler on the cusp, like top four or five tight end in the league. That was their first game without him. Um, I believe it was also a short week because they lost that Monday night game on a, they lost the first game of the season on Monday night, short week. Um, you had your, your rusty, you're now playing without your, your starting tight end. And Jalen single-handedly, as far as, you know, led the team to a win. And that was the first time I'd really seen him do that. And he's been off the charts since. Tennessee, I thought, would be a really tough test. Um, you saw what they did against them. Green Bay, Eagles go up, what, 14 nothing. Green Bay comes back. I think it was 13 nothing. Green Bay comes back, takes the lead, back and forth, back and forth. Jalen never flinched. So he's he's been tested um, the way he, he – he carries himself, his composure, his leadership skills. I mean, I just love the dude. He says all the right things, and and I believe the guy when he says when he speaks. Okay, now the Bears seem to be in a kind of similar situation to where the Eagles were maybe a year ago, two years ago. Obviously, you covered the Bears over the past couple of years. Now you're covering the Eagles. So what do the Bears need to do to get to where the Eagles are now? You don't want my answer to this. Let's hear it. I do. I asked you. I do. No, we, we've just, we, we would discuss this last year. Um, my, my biggest issue with the with what the Bears have done the last two seasons, I did not believe that Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy should have been back in their lame duck season to make a franchise altering decision by drafting the quarterback they wanted. I thought it was it was ridiculous, and the, the Bears keep doing this. They did it. I mean, you go back to to. Um, Tressman and Emery mm-hmm. with Cutler, yep. and then yep. Cutler carries over to the guys who. But yep. then they hire they hire Ryan Pace and force John Fox on him. Yep. So then you have that carry over. Then then you you draft Mitch Trubisky, but don't tell John Fox. So then you waste a year of Mitch's of of Mitch's career with a coach who doesn't want him. Get rid of Fox. You bring in Maggie. We don't know if Maggie. It's just been one thing after another. There's no clean breaks. They should have let go of Pace and and. Uh, and Nagy in 20, at the end of the 29, well, I can't, my, I'm, the years are so crazy. I can't right. believe it's going to be 2023 in three weeks. I still don't know what year it is. Huh. In 2020, right? 20, 21. 21, yes. Yeah. Nagy and Pace should not have been there in 2021. That should have been the new regime making that pick and and forging the path forward. That's mistake number one. Um, I, I just feel that it always, 
successful organizations, teams, franchises. It starts at the top. And George is a really nice human being. He's a good man, I believe. He doesn't know what he's doing. And that's, that's, that's issue number one. Jeffrey Lurie, you can knock Jeffrey Lurie, who's the Eagles owner, for whatever you want. Every single one of the head coaches he has chosen has taken the team to the playoffs. Every single one. I don't know. I didn't, if I bumped into Nick Sirianni, the day, the day the Eagles hired him, I would have known who that dude was. Every single head coach they have chosen, even the ones that were mistakes, even the ones that flamed out, they all took the Eagles to the playoffs. Every single one. And it's, it's, it's ingrained in the organization. Every, most Eagles fans wanted Jeffrey Lurie to, to fire general manager Holly Roseman after the Carson Wentz debacle and, and leaked reporting about, you know, Howie being in the locker room and getting into arguments with players and, you know, leaking, leaking stories to the media, uh, choosing Jalen Rager over Justin Jefferson when, when some people in the building wanted Justin Jefferson, two other people wanted Rager, he takes Rager. He, he missed out on DK Metcalf the year before. Um, but Jeffrey knows Howie better than we do, and he stuck with Howie, and Howie should be the executive of the year because I cannot for the life of me understand how you go from being three or four, 10, and one two years ago to being 12 and one in two seasons. So, so you're saying... So, go ahead, so, go ahead. so just to be clear, you don't believe while the McCaskies are in charge, the Bears can't do that. The Bears can't make that move while the McCaskies in charge. That's really what it comes down to for you. I I don't have the fa- I don't have the I don't have faith that they can do that because they haven't proven that they can do that. Where Jeffrey Lurie and Howie Roseman have proven they can build a winner, and they've done it before. And we'll see how the season ends up. I don't know how it's going to end, but they they built they put together a really good roster. They're twelve and one, and they own the Saints pick, which right now is a top five pick in the in the in, in the April draft. All right, so it doesn't matter, Justin Fields. Doesn't matter, Justin Fields. No, I no, guess. and, I'm, and I'm, not, I'm not saying that because I, I I still think that the new guys should be given an opportunity to to do what they to see what they can do. I think um, if you look at how Howie Roseman builds his teams, it always starts up front. Strong offensive line, strong defensive line. That is where it starts. And if you look at most of the past 20 Super Bowl champions, you're not going to find too many bad offensive lines and defensive lines. You just will not. So even though I I didn't love him trading Roquan Smith, there there, there are some ways in which it makes sense. Yes. As as far as depth, as far as building your draft picks, as far as as where you want to build your team. The Eagles don't have stud linebackers. They have linebackers who are very competent, Mm -hmm. who can tackle, who can cover in space, but... They're not the best players. That's not where they, that's not where the Eagles spend their money. So I I would say you want to build the offensive line. Um, he he corrected his mistake by by missing out on on Jefferson and Metcalf. He drafts Devonta Smith, who I still think is underrated in a lot of ways. He uh, trades for AJ Brown, which, <laughs> dude, if if you trade with Howie Roseman, you should just know that you're probably lost to trade. Like honestly, that, I mean, that, in that Robert Quinn deal though. That Robert Quinn deal. Well, yeah. He was going for it. All right, listen, I'm just yeah. in a podcast with Siafa Lewis, anchor for CBS Philadelphia here with us right now. Um, listen, let's talk a little bit of something nice about the Bears because um, well, yeah. he's going to keep going egging you on. Uh, so let's, <laughs> let's go and talk about Justin, um, where he was at the beginning of the season. Now you're 3,000 feet away in the sky looking at this, being on the ground here in Chicago. What did you think how they were running him, or not running him, how they were playing with him uh, using him, I should say, um, this beginning of the season and how that changed throughout the season and how he basically finally took off and kind of found his way to become kind of a player that looks like he could be a star in the future. So what, one of the weirdest adjustments to moving back home was the fact that for the last eight years, I watched Bears games every Sunday, and now I cannot. So my boys, my boys from Chicago, we have a text thread, and they're texting me, and I'm like, you know, I can't see this. Like, I, I can't see what you're talking about. Nice pass. <laughs> oh, I cannot believe. It. I'm like, bro, you know, I can't see this. <laughs> um, but I, I, I did look at highlights when I could. I, I do look at the box scores. I don't think they were they were utilizing Justin Fields to the best of his ability based on the team around him in the early part of the season. It, it infuriated me. Because this is what we talked about last year too. That first game against Cleveland. What? Um, like, are you trying to protect this guy? Or are you just trying to? Are you trying 
to pretend or lie to yourself that you're trying to win something. Like, what what are we doing here? See, Alpha, we're in the, the future, see, Alpha, we're in the future. No, no, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> saying, that's how I felt about I know. the Cleveland game, for example. And that's, it's similar to how I felt early on in the season mm -hmm. that this new regime was treating Justin Fields. Mm -hmm. Somewhere along the line, I feel as though they said, you know what? I think maybe, maybe after that Monday night game, I think they got pretty, they got savage nationally. I'm not saying that's why they did it. I think they're smart within their own right. But I think they they realize that with the the um, the lack of ability in, in the skill positions, they needed to, to change yeah. their offense mm -hmm. and how they're utilizing this guy and his talents, and they have. Now, I, I, I love that he slides. I, I, I just don't like my quarterback taking unnecessary punishment. Yes. My only concern, when I, when I see a dude rush for 178, 145, I'm like, that's awesome. But my lord, I don't want, my, I don't want dude rushing 18 times a game. Yep. When he not, who was a Detroit Lions? He knocked out the dude uh, at yeah. the goal line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. That's awesome. But I don't want you to do that. I want you to protect your shoulder. Right. Totally. Um. I listen. I love Justin Fields. I was. I was in Chicago in 2020 in my office watching that draft unfold and he's right there at 10 for the Eagles to take and I'm like you gotta take him please take him please take him please take him please take him and they did it um he has so, he has such untapped raw potential um I believe he has the work ethic a la Jalen Hurts I believe he's a leader I believe he's intelligent you just have to you have to figure out what it takes to unlock this dude because the potential is so insanely high. And I, I know you guys see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Real quick, so you, you've already mentioned it, that you wanted the Eagles to take Justin, but looking where Jalen is at now and actually looking at on the cusp of what the Eagles are can do, particularly in a weak NFC, it's probably better to be with the more seasoned quarterback as of right now. But if you could, if, if, if you were running the Eagles, would you prefer for them to have Justin or would you prefer for them to have Jalen? Ugh. Knowing what I know now or going back in time? Both. Well, knowing what I know now, I'd be, I'd be stupid to say that I'd, I'd want Justin Fields because I think that Jalen Hurts also has some untapped potential because we didn't, I did not think that he could improve his arm strength, right. that he could improve his accuracy to this extent, that he could work on his deep pass and his progressions and not, and not you know, locking onto a receiver. I, I did not see it happening this fast. Um, man, I love Justin Fields. I really do. I think Howie Rose, I think Howie Rose made the right decision, but I, I'm still so captivated by, by Justin Fields. Um, the skill set he brings to the table and, and then also the off the field intangibles. I'm just, it's, ugh, it's next level. It's I mean, next level stuff. Let's be honest. It's a win-win. I mean, either way you've got, a, a top shelf, top flight quarterback. Both, both these guys, right. in my opinion, are at the top of the game. So it's not like and, there's and, a wrong and, answer. And, and being, and being totally fair, I don't know if Justin Fields in year this is year two, right? Yeah. Yep. I, I don't know if I don't know if in year two he takes the leap that that Jalen did. I have no idea. Now I do know that the head coach in Philly is an offensive coordinator. He's an offensive guy, as opposed to your situation there. I do know that Justin has had two head coaches and two offensive coordinators. So he, he's, it, it hasn't been the same for the two players, but it, it's, it's captivating to think about what this offense would look like with the Justin Fields. For sure. All right. We talked a lot about offense because the offense is the most exciting, especially with the Eagles and uh, with <laughs> Justin Fields. But we should talk a little bit of defense because the Eagles defense has also been much improved. I mean, the past two seasons, they're a bottom half defense this year. Now they're top 10. So I'm just curious from your perspective, what's been that key to, for them to, to make that leap from bottom half in the NFL to now a top 10 defense. Well, they were actually statistically ranked in the top 10 last year, which a lot of Eagles sports fans, a lot of Eagles sports fans, a lot of Eagles fans hated to hear last year. Statistically, they were top 10 last year, but we both know it was a lot of bend, bend but don't break. Um, there's been a lot of heat here on the defensive coordinator, John Gannon, because of his style of defense. We are used to attacking, blitzing, aggressive defenses. That's not how he plays. He plays to prevent the big play. That's that's just what he does. So he has this four linemen, he has two backers, and he has a dime or a nickel. And it's all predicated on stopping the, the big play. And... Eagles fans have hated that, but it's been very successful um, against Pittsburgh. First quarter against Pittsburgh, Jordan Davis, who was a first-round draft pick, I believe, 
Um, I, I forget what trade that was, but he's a big dude out of Georgia. 6'6", 350. He's a house. Um, climbs up the middle. He, he played like 30% of the snaps, but the Eagles' run defense was was really humming, shall we say, um, up until the game against Pittsburgh, and then they really took a step back. That's when he, that's when Howie Roseman signed and Dama Kung Su and, and uh, Linville, jo- Linville Joseph. Then Davis came back. So now they have this ridiculous defensive tackle rotation where these guys all play like 30%. None of them are ever tired. Mm. And it's just really hard for the offense, to, uh, the offensive line to get any footing because you have new guys. You have Fletcher Cox. Fletcher, there's a game after uh, Davis got hurt where Fletcher Cox played like 70% of the snaps, which is just way too much for a guy who's 33, 34 years old. Since then, he's, he's refreshed. He's rejuvenated. Um, so anyway... Howie focused on the D-line with uh, uh, drafting the big guy. He got two new – well, he re-signed T.J. Edwards, who's been really, really good this year. He got Kazir White out of San Diego. He drafted the Kobe Dean in the third round, who plays on special teams. Um, I forget who got hurt a couple games ago. I got hurt last week. Dean came in and in, like, 30 snaps, had six tackles, looked really good, was roaming all around. He's, he's undersized, but he's fast, attacks the ball. Obviously, we signed James Bradbury from the Giants – um, and he's been a revelation on the other cornerback on the other side from Darius Slay, who, I mean, what can you say? What can you say about Darius Slay? But I'm, I'm not going to say he's a lockdown corner, but he's, he's as close as, as that style gets in the, in the modern NFL. Um, and then you saw, uh, traded for C.J. Gardner-Johnson, safety from New Orleans. So he revamped the entire defense in a lot of ways. Just it's about talent. Yeah. And, it, and, and whether Eagles fans like it or not, the scheme works. I'm glad you brought up Indomitian Sue and Linville Joseph. Um, and you might have already answered my question, to be honest, about keeping them fresh, because I was, I was going to ask, you know, these are two big signings. There's a lot of fanfare, you know, even though they're older guys. But on the stat sheet, at least, we haven't really seen the impact. But is that impact still super valuable when they're keeping other guys really fresh so that they can be, play to the best of the abilities? Are there other impacts that we're not seeing that aren't showing up in the box score? I, th- I, th- I think that rotation with, you know, Josh Sweat, Fletcher Cox, um, Milton Williams, who was uh, drafted a couple years ago, has been underwhelming. Um, I think fr- I think making sure those – that rotation of five, six guys, I think the fact that they're all fresh is, is pivotal, especially, you know, as the games um, go on. And then I also think that, as you know – you may not see, you know, tackles or sacks, but if it helps another guy get free, that's just as good. Right on. Yeah. Speaking of all that talent, it, of course, it seemed like the run defense was an issue, but it's been shored up. Are there any weaknesses that the Bears could perhaps exploit this Sunday or any other team that has more talent than the Bears looking forward to the Eagles in this, this championship run that seemed like it's seemingly going on? Uh. I don't believe the Eagles have played a quarterback with a running. I mean, obviously they practice against Jalen Hurts, um, but that's different. They haven't they haven't played a, a quarterback with the the, the game breaking ability of a Justin Fields. Um, Eagles weaknesses on defense. Yeah, it's I, I hate I I don't I don't like. There are four games to play. A lot of things can happen. I don't. I'm not. I'm not that cocky fan who you know is buying a ticket to the desert. That's 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 the furthest from whom I who I am. I, I respect all my opponents to the nth degree. On paper, there aren't any deficiencies that you could list as saying this is a this is a strength that you can take advantage of. There there just aren't any. On either side of the ball, the biggest, the biggest efficiency that the special team stinks, and then they, uh, well, their punter got hurt on Sunday, so that that'll be interesting to see. Um, it's a kick. I think kickoff coverage a couple games ago was pretty bad, but they've shored that up. I think they got a couple starters in there. They have a different returner on kick returns. Last Sunday, <laughs> averaged like twenty five yards compared to the the, the uh, original guy. So. Man, it must be nice know. being an Eagles fan. <laughs> it makes, me, makes me uncomfortable. Man, it sounds so good being an Eagles fan right, right now. So yeah, really good. Yeah, but it, yeah, no, it's great. Um, obviously, tons of stars, right? Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, Miles Sanders, Fletcher Cox. We talked about, you know, Donovan Kutsu and the other tackles. Darius Slay, right? And we could go on and on and on and on and on about all the stars. But is there an unsung hero that the Eagles have that maybe fans in Chicago don't know about that, you know, is maybe a glue guy or a key guy that doesn't get a lot of the fanfare? Well, we haven't discussed 
I think the the greatest strength that the Eagles have, and that's their offensive line. Um, you've got one young guy, Landon Dickerson. He's a guard. He was drafted last. He was drafted not in twenty twenty two. Was drafted in twenty twenty one out of Alabama. A lot of injury issues at in Alabama. At Alabama, that's why he fell to the second round. But he's a beast. He's a he's a oh he's amazing. Um, I think they have the best offensive line in football. Jordan Maialata mm-hmm. is what six eight three fifty left tackle, and you have Lane Johnson right tackle. He could play left tackle, but Lane Johnson right tackle. Jason Kelsey's probably the best center in football. He, the dude, I mean, mm-hmm. the athleticism that guy has, the yeah. speed that he has for a guy who's like six three three hundred pounds. Uh, Travis Kelsey's brother, obviously, mm-hmm. get out. I I just don't. Their their offensive line is it's so good and consistent yet so underrated. So that's why that's why I'd give them some love. love it. Um Quez Watkins is our third hour. He's the Eagles' third wide receiver. He's a speed guy. He kind of gets lost in the in the shuffle when you talk about, you know, AJ Brown and Devonta Smith, but he has some game breaking ability. Um Dallas Goddard is in my opinion a top five ten at tight end. He could, he might return on Sunday. Mm-hmm. I think his window he is officially to. opened. He yeah, heard it in the in the in the uh, Commanders game, the, the the that Monday night game. Um, but even even the two tight ends who who who've been playing for him, Grant Calcaterra and Tyree Jackson, who's a converted running back, a uh, converted uh, quarterback from college. The first game they were horrible, but since then they they've showed up. They're blocking. They're they're making catches when they when they get the opportunity. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like all eleven guys on both sides of the ball are really solid. <laughs> oh well, the Eagles are without CJ Gardner Johnson lacerated his oh, kidney, right. which is just horrible Ooh. to, to uh. Can you imagine contact strong enough to lacerate your kidney? Right. Uh that was two games ago. His his backup was a uh undrafted rookie free agent, Reed Blankenship, who was carted off on Sunday. So there's a hole in the secondary. Yeah, Rebrook, he was balling too, Blankenship. He, was, he played well. He had an interception against uh, against Aaron Rodgers in that game that he came in. Yeah. yeah. Well, sorry, the special teams. He, he was now we got your answer, Ken. They can they can target that one guy in the secondary. That's that's <laughs> there you go. There's that's the what one we shall hole. exploit. <laughs> um, listen, and you just mentioned Reed Blankenship being undrafted. I, I want to ask you a draft question. Um, you talked about the Eagles building building out from the trenches. What do you think the Bears, as of right now, that they have the third slot? What do you think they should do in this upcoming NFL draft? It, it goes against what I just what I just argued earlier, but I, I'm obsessed with Will Anderson out of, out of Alabama. And when you when you have it's it may not be a fair comparison, but when you have a Micah Parsons type player on defense, he's a problem for the offense for the next ten plus years, and you have to game plan for that guy. He's a game wrecker. And then I have a buddy who's like, it didn't work with Khalil Mack. I'm like, come on, man. Like, that's I, – I don't think it's the same. I don't I don't think the talent the, – the the versatility is the same. And uh, the Bears did have the best defense that year. If, if mm-hmm. I'm – if last I remember, I thought that they, they had the best defense in football that season. And their issues were on offense. Right. Last I checked. So I, I don't think it didn't work out because of Khalil Mack per se. Yeah, and we didn't get the first several years of Khalil yeah. Mack either. Think about how different that would have right. been. Like, right, if he we was, had was like year five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like we, raw Khalil Mack straight out the draft. Yep. You know, and even if you flip it to go along with the Anderson thing, even if we're if we're gonna play it out, if it's Khalil Mack, well, think about what the, the Bears gave up to get Khalil Mack, and if Anderson can right. be that in a few years, that's draft picks to help you along the way. As I play in fantasy right. land with the draft right now. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I understand the concept and the idea of, of, of obtaining more draft picks, but you have to hit on those picks. Like, people people really treat draft picks like Willy Wonka's golden ticket, man. You have to hit on those draft picks. If you miss, that's a missed opportunity. I want studs. I want dudes who can play. Give me guys who can play. I'll make the rest work. So no trading, down, trading back since teams are going to want a quarterback is what you're trying to tell us, even though your team did it. My team did what? As far as using, you know, using their draft assets to giving up a, a, a draft pick so someone can go up and get a quarterback. Well, think about it, though. <laughs> Again, this is Howie Roseman. First of all, for Carson Wentz, he he traded the farm to move up to number two to get to Carson Wentz. True. Mm-hmm. Um, last year, the Eagles would have had three first-round draft picks, one of which they traded with 
the the doll. I mean, that, he's such a man, insane maneuverer. Um, he traded one of those picks to get AJ Brown. He traded one of those picks. I didn't get out of the first round to get a pick for this year. So it's all about what you do with the with the draft capital. You don't necessarily have to use it all in the same year. And I think the position that the Bears are in, you would like to use all those picks. You know what I mean? Yeah, they got to turn over um, a lot of that roster. Yeah. Yeah. I. The most important thing to me for the Bears, you need guys who can get on the field and contribute on day one. That's what you need. I think that's what Will Anderson... I, I just don't think... If you look at the draft capital that they 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 um they gave up for Khalil Mack plus the the resources and the salary cap space they gave up to get Khalil Mack and I'm not I don't need to put Will Anderson in that class it's it's blasphemous to do that but when you're talking about a guy who has that type of potential I want him from day one and I want him cheap for four years with right. a fifth year option yes give me that and I'll make the rest work right on all right so let's get your prediction for this upcoming game with the Eagles traveling to Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> I hate predictions. What's what's the weather look like on Sunday? I think it's supposed to be in the twenties. Actually, it's in the forties right now. It's low forties right now, Siafa. So just know you you know you're you're doing well out same there. Here. Okay. Yeah, no, it's the same here. It's same here. is it the same type um, of forty though? Is it you know that ch- it's no. different? I, I no. don't know. I know. Um, right. There's there's no front here. I, the, no. Yeah. <laughs> when people when people want to talk about cold here, I'm like, please stop. Right. Please stop. <laughs> I, I have I have a, a screenshot on my phone. It was a forecast that uh, NBC Five Chief Meteorologist Brant Miller he he had a it was in January 2019. It was the the, the wind chill was like negative 60. Remember that? Obviously, mm-hmm. you remember that. Polar vortex. Whenever people want to talk about cold, I'm like, just here, take a look at this, please. <laughs> um, I think I had my feet under my radiator that day. Like literally, just feet <laughs> under the radiator to stay warm. Four layers. Yeah. Try to try to make sure you don't have to get out of the car for gas. Yep. Um, is Darnell Mooney hurt? Yes, he's out for the remainder of the season. Yeah. Is Montgomery playing this week? We don't know. Montgomery's playing. Did he? He missed left. Did he miss? Uh, you he missed a couple week? weeks. Khalil Herbert is, is out, out for the remainder. Yeah, he's he could come back. Though. He yeah. can come back after this week. So yeah. Khalil Herbert out. Dave Montgomery in. Okay. Chase Claypool uh, in. Darnell Mooney out. You saying that like Chase Claypool, <laughs> I, I was so excited. I was so excited when the Bears traded for Chase Claypool. He burned the Eagles for three touchdowns a couple years ago, um, his rookie season, and I was like, that dude is the truth. Um, I, I took the fantasy ride with him, and I every every single time I did two years, I got burnt. So yeah, no. And he's not doing anything for you guys, is he? Uh, no, we're not that stuff. happy with the trade as we were when the trade. I mean. Was- <laughs> Yeah. The production, the yeah. production has not been there, but it's, that's unfair. Like he's he's drawn a couple I wish of DPIs Josh was here right now. I wish Josh. He's had some deep shot. It's not enough. It's, it's not, not enough. enough. When we're it's s- not enough. It's the, the now looking at it. It's kind of like what yeah. could we have gotten with that high second round pick? Could we have gotten another receiver? Again, maybe he'll be the player that we like. We're not asking him to be a one, but we damn sure would like right. him to be a two. Watch, he's about to go off for three touchdowns now again this week. All right, good for him. Especially because Siafa just said it. Against, the, against that safety, we don't know. Um, if I have to make a prediction, I would go based on the conditions and the fact that the Eagles are playing the Cowboys next week. Uh, let's say Eagles 27, Bears 13. Yeah, Bears going to score more than that. Um, real quick, they will? yeah, that was it's Justin, bro. If just is the question is Justin healthy? Yeah, we can get more than that. Justin's going to score one by himself, and probably either a running back or receiver get another touchdown. That's just my prediction. All right, so they have one so more point now. So one now more point. Up to and fourteen. Cairo Santos, <laughs> Cairo Santos shall kick a field goal, making it seventeen. Okay, points. up to four here's, more points. Here's my here's my difficulty making this prediction. Um, I did not see the Eagles dominating the Tennessee Titans, thirty-five to ten. Um, and like I said, I was at the game against the Giants on Sunday. Who predicts 48-22? Um, one of the concerns I had about the Eagles, and and generally when a team gets out to a red-hot start, I, I love looking up the stat. I think the 2006 Colts are the last team to lose their first game 
in the season. They're the, they're the last undefeated team in the NFL that given season to go on to win the Super Bowl. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Every year, there's yeah. the last undefeated team. Right. That team very rarely goes on to the Super Bowl because they feel like they peak too early. Right. right on. So my concern was maybe the Eagles will peak too early. And I don't think they peak too early because I think that little dip in the in the middle of the calendar there where they played two games in 30-something days, I think that was, you know, where they where they kind of slipped up, if you will. And I think they're peaking now, which is kind of scary. So on paper, 27-13 is, is not really – it doesn't make any sense based on what the Eagles have done recently and based on what the Bears have done recently. But like I said, I, I like to respect all my opponents. I uh, don't know what the weather conditions are going to be like on the lake. Um, they haven't played a quarterback like Justin Fields. I don't like what he has around him, but I do think he is dynamic. Um, so that's why that's how I get 27-13. All right, Siafa, how has it been now returning home, being around your family, and how much do you miss Chicago but enjoy the fact that also you're a news anchor and it's something that you aspire to be, but you're back home with your fam and your friends? Um, it's it's still surreal. Like, I'll, I'll drive to work. I'm going to work in a couple hours. I have a couple meetings before work. Um, I drive to work, and it's still surreal that, you know, I grew up here. This is where I'm from. Like, I'm used to all this. And for the last seven and a half, I keep saying for the last seven and a half years when I was, I've been here for a year now, <laughs> but for seven and a half of my year, uh, seven and a half years of my life, Chicago was home. It's, 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 I, I, it's an indescribable, really weird out of body type of experience. And even though it has been a year, it's still weird. Mm -hmm. Um, my my wife, there's so many times I'm like, can we get Portillos? Oh yeah, right, we can. Uh. <laughs> um, you know the lakefront. It's it's Christmas time. Um, Chicago is a, is a one of a kind city, and I, I was on Instagram early this morning because I couldn't sleep, and a friend of ours who is also from South Jersey, who also moved to Chicago, lived there for a couple of years. Um, had posted a picture and said this will, this will always be a home and that's that's kind of how I feel um, but it's great to you know see my mom whenever I want to uh, my dad is here as well I was at the Giants game with my brother on Sunday um, we are hosting Christmas dinner my brother told me on Sunday that we are hosting Christmas dinner so that's good to know but my wife's sis my wife's sister lives 10 minutes away my in-laws, I love my in-laws, they will be here on Thursday for the holidays. Not that they would not do in Chicago, but it's easier when it's here because everybody's here. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's nothing like home, as you guys know. Definitely. Siafa, always appreciate you, man. We miss you here in Chicago. Have a terrific day. Good luck with the Eagles. I, I am rooting for them, and I'm not hating on you. I, I hope your team wins the Super Bowl this year. Except if they face Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love and miss you guys thank you so much for having me on um, I wish you guys happy holidays Merry Christmas I hope Justin Fields becomes a pro bowler and and, and the, the Bears figure it out they figure out how to build around them how to build a winning team and then hopefully the next time we play each other in a couple years there's something on the line right totally. we have a couple 10 win teams playing you know totally that's 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 the hope we, we hope we from your mouth to his ears <laughs> all right everybody follow and then, and then and then we'll have to do a couple trips where yes. you guys come to philly yes. Yes. Chicago. So yes that's what i'm talking about all right follow siafa at siafa underscore lewis siafa we appreciate it that is it for the under center podcast please like uh get this podcast wherever you get your podcast and you can watch this entire interview on youtube and we always appreciate you